Hello, Gophers. It's good to be with you here in Paris. My talk today is for all of the Go programmers who use net.listen in your Go programs, or in other words, anyone who's written server applications. I'm going to show you how you can improve and automate the network security of your Go programs using a new protocol called Acme. The name of this protocol isn't really important. It means automated certificate management environment. Uh, but what is important is what it gives you. And we're talking about, of course, TLS certificates. We're talking about getting security at the transport layer. And uh, if you've done this before, you understand, of course, that, that TLS gives you certain guarantees. So what do we mean when we talk about security at the transport layer? Well, obviously, we mean confidentiality. We want our data to remain private in transit. But we also want integrity, which is something that we often overlook when we have applications that don't transmit what we think is sensitive information. But integrity means that people can't tamper with our transmissions. Or if they do, we can detect it and reject it. Authenticity is the final guarantee that TLS gives us. Authenticity is the promise that we know that we are talking to the right machine and not an impersonator. So how do you get these guarantees? What is it about TLS that gives you uh, this assurance? And the answer is that these come as a natural result of using the cryptographic properties of a TLS certificate in your application. So you could open up your terminal, and you could run an OpenSSL command, and you could generate a TLS certificate that gives you the guarantees of confidentiality and integrity. And these come easily, and these are very important. But what you can't do is generate a certificate yourself that gives you authenticity. This is regarded by security experts uh, according to kind of the common threat model for websites and web applications as a vital part of the, the TLS guarantees. In other words, without authenticity, the other two guarantees are empty or irrelevant. You could, of course, generate a certificate for Google.com or Dropbox.com, but who are your clients who are connecting to you? Who are they to trust you when you say that you are Google.com? So you need a trusted third party, which we call certificate authorities, to vouch for your identity. Uh, and it's this interaction with a third party that makes TLS a little bit difficult and gives you some maintenance burden and some overhead as a, a site owner and as a server operator. If you've ever um, obtained a, C a TLS certificate before, you know the process. You know that these are the steps. And I've been this poor, confused gopher who doesn't really know what he's doing. Um, and you have, to, you have to do this process every year or two when your certificate expires. And if you mess up, that's really bad, because not only will your site go down, but uh, your site will go red in browsers, meaning that uh, users will be scared away because of security warnings. Uh, these are a lot of steps, and if you've, how many of you have done this process more than once? All the hands go up. How many of you liked it? All the hands go down. Um, I'm, I'm with you, I feel for you. We can have like a therapy session afterward. You can tell me all the, the hurt that you've had to go through. Some of this isn't too bad, right? Like generating a CSR or, or making a, a key isn't too bad. And maybe even like configuring your server isn't too bad. But these steps in the middle um, are hard to automate. So if you've done this a couple of times, maybe you've automated the beginning and the end. And so these highlighted steps here are the ones that aren't easily automated. They involve filling out order forms on the internet and clicking links and emails, uh, which historically are not awesome for security. Uh, and in fact, so that's another problem with this whole process, is that this poor gopher has no idea what's about to hit him. Because this is a dangerous process, and it's error prone. So these highlighted steps here are a little bit more error prone uh, than we would like, or vulnerable to attack. And in fact, we've seen 
attacks against these steps uh, recently with major CAs for major websites. And uh, we want to avoid this. And this is a little scary because this is a process we use to generate security credentials. And so we have these unnecessarily exposed attack vectors. And we want to eliminate them. And so the ACME protocol, um, if implemented by certificate authorities, allows us to throw out all of these steps and swap them out for a new process that is vastly simplified and, uh, and much safer. And so here we have steps where the first two steps and the last two in the process are pretty obvious and quite easy. And if you use this protocol, you can be this happy little gopher with his or her certificate. Uh, the middle step, though, is what I should talk about for a few minutes um, so that you understand what's going on with this protocol and so that you can use it in your Go programs. Uh, and this involves solving an ACME challenge. Now remember that the purpose of ACME is to help you negotiate a certificate from a certificate authority. In other words, ACME's job is to verify your identity, is to prove that you own the host name that you say you own so that others can trust you. There are three ways to do this, to help ensure that you can do this in an automated way in your Go programs. And we call these the three ACME challenge types. There's the HTTP challenge, the TLS SNI challenge, and the DNS challenge. They all look like this in that they involve the interaction between the ACME certificate authority server, your server or application, and DNS servers. Now, I'll give you a high-level view of how each of these work. You won't need to implement them as a Go programmer, but you should know which ones you can use in which situations. The HTTP challenge is simply a GET request from the ACME certificate authority to your server. And if you can serve up a special resource on port 80 at a specific URI, then you prove ownership of the domain, and you're granted the certificate. You have to open port 80 for this. And you have to be accessible from the outside. So if you're behind a load balancer or a proxy or a firewall, this could be a little tricky. But the nice thing is that this challenge requires no uh, extra configuration. And most Acme clients that you use will be able to do this automatically and by default. The TLS SNI challenge is the next challenge type. And this is also very common in that you open port 443 the ACME Certificate Authority attempts to negotiate a special TLS handshake with you. And if you can complete that handshake using uh, a special server name, then you are verified and can download your certificate. Now, like the HTTP challenge, this requires that you open port 443. And you have to be available from the outside. You don't want to perform this challenge manually unless you are proficient in completing TLS handshakes in real time. Um, but again, the nice thing is that there's no extra configuration required. So Acme clients can just do this automatically, and it's nice because it happens on the HTTPS port, uh, which is the common application for TLS certificates, but not the only one. Now, if you're behind a proxy or a load balancer, uh, or you have other firewall restrictions, then you may be interested in this last challenge type. The DNS challenge works without opening a listener, or without your machine having to be accessible to the out, uh, external networks. All you have to do is set a special record in your zone file, and the ACME CA looks up the, that host name, and if that special text record is there with a special value, then you can download your certificate. So this is great for those situations where you are, have special restrictions. Uh, if your DNS provider provides an API, then this challenge can also be automated. Uh, otherwise, you can do this manually. However, if your DNS provider is slow to apply changes, which we have seen some that take up to a half an hour, then maybe you should shop around. But um, so this requires a little extra configuration for your Acme client. You have to give it per, uh, credentials for your DNS provider. And that's not really a big deal. But um, you also need to give it a function of some sort so that it can run some code and interact with your DNS provider's API. So these are the three challenge types. And between these three, you should be able to get a TLS certificate 
for your Go program in an automated way in whatever your situation. So how does this actually look in a Go program? How do you as the programmer actually use this? I'll show you a few packages that you can use. These are Acme clients that serve various purposes. Um, and then you'll see too that Go 1.8 with a question mark is on this list. And recently a proposal was raised to vendor Acme support directly into the Go standard library so that when you call HTTP dot listen and serve, for example, it would serve over HTTPS by default instead of HTTP. And this is really where we want to go with this. This is really where, this is why Acme was invented. Um, but maybe it's not a great fit for the Go standard library. I'll let you be your own judge of that. The proposal has been, I think, shelved for now. But then I'll show you a concrete example of this in use with Caddy, a web server written in Go, so that you can get a vision for what is possible with your own Go programs. So this first package is by Russ Cox, and it's the Let's Encrypt package. Now, Acme is CA uh, agnostic, but Let's Encrypt right now is the only uh, certificate authority that implements Acme, and you can get certificates for free from them. So all you do is create a manager, and you configure it with a cache file. Now remember, certificates are valid for 90 days, and so you don't need to get a new one every time you run your Go program. In fact, doing that is going to run you into rate limits with your certificate authority, uh, and that's going to potentially introduce downtime. So you need to cache the assets you get from your certificate authority. So here it creates a cache file, and then instead of calling http.serve, you call m.serve. And it will redirect your plain text traffic to encrypted traffic, and it will just use the default serve mux. And so this is really great for uh, your simple Go HTTP applications. It will keep the certificate renewed, of course, during the lifetime of the service. AutoCert is another one. This is in the X libraries, and it's powered by the X libraries Acme implementation. You create a manager, just like in the last package, and you can give it some extra configuration here. Uh, first, we have a prompt field that allows us to define how we want the user to uh, be shown and agree to the certificate authority's terms of service. So Acme has a provision for legal terms, and unfortunately, we just have to deal with that. Um, the host policy whitelists certain host names to obtain certificates for, and this is important because the way this package works is it will obtain a certificate during the first TLS handshake that requires it. Uh, and then caching, of course, we set up a directory cache here on the file system. And if you don't, it will only keep the certificate in memory, so keep that in mind uh, as far as rate limits go. Anyway, the output of this package, the output of a manager, is a get certificate callback. And you want to set this in your TLS config, because this is what will be used to obtain or load the certificate during the handshakes. And because of Acme, for the first time practically in history, we're able to obtain TLS certificates on demand during TLS handshakes, and we don't have to think about it anymore. Notice that we don't pass in a certificate and key file here in the last line of listen and serve TLS, because we get them during the handshake. This is really cool technology. DQMER's Acme wrapper is another one that's very simple and, and plain and easy to use. To use this one, you create a new Acme wrapper with certain config properties. And you pass in the domain names that you want to be on the certificate. And then you um, specify a certificate and key file and where to store those. Now, when using Acme, there's also the no notion of user accounts with a certificate authority, and so you have to specify where to store those assets as well so that you can reuse them. But it's very much like the last package in that its output is actually an entire TLS config that you can call uh, put into tls.listen. Now, this last package is called Lego, and, uh, and this is written by a computer security student in Austria named Sebastian Earhart, and he's done a fantastic job. This is the earliest Go Acme impl client implementation, and it's very good. This is actually commissioned for use in Caddy originally. It's a little more hands-off, though, a little lower level, so there's a few more things to wire up, but it gives you a, access to a wider variety of knobs and switches to customize your Acme interactions. 
So um, to use it, you have to create a user, you have to register it with the CA, and then you have to store those assets somewhere. That's just a few lines of code. But then you create a new client, you pass in the URL to the certificate authority you're using, for example, Let's Encrypts. Uh, and then you pass in your user and the type of key that you want to generate for your certificates, RSA or ECC or, or those kinds of things. And then you simply call obtain certificate and pass in the domain and a few options, including whether you want the certificate bundle or just the leaf certificate and then any existing private key you want to reuse, and this is good for public key pinning. And then you, of course, have to store those yourself somewhere uh, safe. So this is a very robust package, and it gives you access to customize the challenge types that you use, and it lets you uh, even use the DNS challenge with over a dozen DNS providers just by providing credentials. So to give you an example of what this looks like, uh, I'll show you how Caddy does it. If you've used Caddy, you've probably experienced this process. You create a Caddy file, you specify the host name for the site that you're serving, and then when you start the server, it negotiates a new TLS certificate in a couple of seconds, and, and then your site is, your service is up and running, and it redirects the HTTP to HTTPS automatically. And, uh, and it has a verified certificate from Let's Encrypt. So this is the goal. Uh, we want to encrypt everything. And as, as programmers, as site developers who are operating these services for other people, we have a responsibility to protect their data. And now we can do this without any overhead, without having to even think about managing certificates or dealing with that hassle or that cost. Uh, and so as you develop your Go programs that use the network, please, uh, encrypt responsibly. Thank you very much. <laughs>